Hi, I'm Jessica from New Jersey, and I'm invisible. But before I continue, please like and subscribe, and you might find a present in your locker. When my mom was young, she was the most beautiful girl in town. She was prom queen, lead cheerleader, and most likely to succeed. When she graduated from high school, she married her high school sweetheart, the smartest boy in school. But everything changed when she had me. She gave up on her dream to become a model, and my father was so focused on his studies that they argued constantly and struggled to pay rent. Then one day, my dad was gone. My mom was so angry that he left, and it didn't help that I looked just like him and liked to play with the science and math books he left behind. Play with your dolls like a normal girl. Those books will rot your brain. Then my mom married my stepfather, and on my third birthday, my little brother Shane was born. They fell in love with Shane at first sight. They turned my room into a nursery and shifted me to the attic. And from then on, I was invisible. On my seventh birthday, my parents threw Shane and I a huge birthday party, and they forgot to put my name on the cake. One day, I built a robot from spare parts around the house, but then Shane walked in and told my parents he'd made captain of his little league football team. My parents were so excited for Shane that they rushed out to celebrate and didn't even notice they'd left without me. Shane was athletic and a great dancer, and like my parents, he looked like he stepped out of a fashion magazine. The three of them spent all day posing in the mirror and taking selfies. You are so beautiful, honey. I know. Be it, darling Jessica. Hold up the light. But when my parents weren't looking, Shane made it his mission to make my life miserable. One day, he switched my shampoo with food coloring. Ha! You look like a pumpkin. Another time, he ran around the house like a maniac and knocked over my mom's favorite vase. Just did it. He opened a carton of milk and poured it on the floor. I tried to stop her. He cut up all my stepdad's ties and threw them under the bed. Shane did this. I saw him do it. But every time, my parents punished me and rewarded Shane. When I was 12, I won the school spelling bee. Look, Dad, I got a medal. For spelling words? Oh, that's so boring. I won first place in the Math Olympics. Math is for losers. No, it's not. I told you, Jess is a nerd. There are two kinds of people, Jess. Winners like us and losers like your deadbeat dad. Your dad was a nerd. He studied all the time and almost ruined our lives. Try to be more like your brother. He can teach you a thing or two. Shane's a jerk. He's as dumb as a bag of rocks. He bullies other kids. And he can barely spell his own name. And nerds aren't losers, they're smart. Smart people invented your cell phones, designed this house, and the fancy cars you drive. After that, my parents hid my books and forbade me from studying in the house. They even grounded me when I brought home straight A's on my report card. It's for your own good. This is ridiculous. When I was 15, I secretly entered a national science competition. If I won, I'd get a huge college scholarship and my face would be all over the news. Then it would be impossible for my parents to ignore me and they'd finally see the value in being smart. I shut myself in my room for days as I worked on my project. What are you doing? Nothing. Mom, Dad, Jess is doing science for fun. The day of the science fair came and I'd made it to the final round. But as the judges came by to look at my project, something went horribly wrong. Why is that thing smoking? It's fine. Everything's fine. I just need to adjust the settings. I tried to fix it, but then suddenly my project caught fire. Everyone ran screaming out of the building. The fire brigade put the fire out, but the building and all the projects were ruined. I was banned from the competition for life. And the next day, my parents got a letter demanding payment for the damages. My parents were pissed. They were already spending a fortune on Shane's fencing lessons, acting classes, and private football coaching. What were you thinking? I just wanted you to be proud of me for once. I wanted you to see me. Well, we see you now, and you're a disappointment. Why can't you be more like Shane? And we're not paying for this young lady. It's time you learn some responsibility. My mom told me to get a job to pay the bill. Well, I'd show them. I'd pay for the damages, and then, save up money for college and leave this family for good. A week later, I walked into a weird store that sold scented candles and crystals, and a cute boy named Zach appeared out of nowhere and grabbed my hand. Your aura is magnetic. You're a diamond in the rough. Uh, really? Yeah. 
and everything in the store is 20% off. I don't have any money. Zach dropped my hand instantly and walked off. Then the owner of the store came up to me. Can you start tomorrow? I accepted the job. Zach and I worked the same shifts. I loved listening to him speak to the customers. His voice was silky smooth, and he looked like a Greek statue come to life. One day, he caught me staring. What are you looking at? I was just, um, I, I... You mind getting back to work? Another time, I wore a fancy dress, a pair of high heels, and some lipstick to work to get his attention. He and a bunch of customers gave me strange looks my whole shift. Then I spotted myself in the mirror. There was toilet paper on my shoe and lipstick all over my teeth. A week later, I was riding the bus to work, and I saw Zach in the seat across from me struggling with a math problem. So, uh, what are you doing? What do you think I'm doing? Do you need some help? Why would I want your help? You're only in high school. I'm in college. I'm really good at math. It's kind of like my superpower. I'm already taking classes at a college level. Zach sat next to me and handed me the math book. My heart skipped a beat when his hand brushed against mine. I solved the problem in less than a minute. Wow, you really are smart. We could study together. Maybe get something to eat too? Like a date, but with books. A date? Oh God, did I just ask Zach out? <laughs> Sorry, never mind. Just joking. <laughs> you think dating me is a joke? No, I just... I'm messing with you, Jess. A date with books? Sounds cool. We went to the library and studied for hours. Zach was charming and sweet, and we had so much in common. We liked the same video games and MSA videos. One night, he told me that he felt just as invisible as I did in high school. I didn't have anything in common with all those rich kids from class. All they talked about was their money and their cars. I couldn't afford any of that, and I wasn't interested. So I kept to myself. I still do. Do you ever get lonely? Not anymore. I've got you. One night, I was studying on the porch, and Shane spit a spitball at my head. What's up with you? You're acting strange. What do you mean? It's your face. There's something wrong with it. No, there isn't. You're smiling. You never smile. Then my cell phone rang. It was Zach, and I quickly silenced my phone. You're blushing. Who was that? None of your business. OMG, you have a boyfriend? Shane ran off and told my parents. That's amazing. We were so worried about you, sweetie. Being a lonely nerd just isn't healthy. But she's so weird and boring. Who'd want to date her? Be nice to your sister. She's finally done something worth celebrating. They insisted that I invite Zach over for dinner. So I reluctantly did. Wow, these are nice. You didn't need to bring anything. I'm meeting my girlfriend's parents for the first time. Your girlfriend? We've been dating for a few months now. I kind of figured we were. If I'm wrong, then... You're not wrong. Zach pulled me close and kissed me, and I almost melted. When we walked in, Shane and my parents were already at the table. The moment they looked at Zach, all three of them gasped. What is he doing here? This is Zach. He's my boyfriend. I should leave. No, don't be silly. You just got here. I pulled Zach to the table and we sat down. We ate in silence as Shane gave Zach death glares the whole time. My parents weren't much better. Every few minutes, they'd glance at me and Zach and then whisper amongst themselves. I couldn't stand it. I'd finally found someone that cared about me, and my family was trying to drive him away? What's the problem? Why are you all acting so crazy? Your boyfriend's a jerk and a liar. He's using you to hurt us. And Jess is a dumb loser. She fell for it. What? If I knew Jess was related to this toxic family, I would have stayed miles away from her. Then Zach left. I tried to go after him, but my father grabbed my arm. Let him go. You shouldn't have brought that trash into this house. I can't say I'm surprised that you fell for his lies. You've never been good at making smart decisions. When will you stop disappointing this family? My parents demanded that I never speak to Zach again. They wouldn't tell me what Zach had done, no matter how much I begged, and just shut themselves up in their rooms. The next day, I saw Zach at work. Zach, I don't understand what happened last night. Forget it. People like you don't get along with people like me. Just then, Shane and his friends showed up and headed straight for Zach. Stay away from my sister, you liar. I'm not a liar. Yes, you are. You and your stupid loser of a father. Then Zach lost it. He shoved Shane into a display case and they got into the biggest fight. Customers panicked and ran out of the store. A couple of security guards showed up and pulled them apart. Shane and his friends left and then the store owner fired Zach on the spot. 
Zach stopped meeting me at the library and didn't answer my calls. I went to his college, but apparently he hadn't come to class in weeks. I was so worried. I had to do something. So I snuck into the office at work and found Zach's address. What are you doing here? I want answers. My family won't tell me why they hate you. You refuse to talk to me. I just don't know what to do. So I've decided that I'm going to sit here and stare at you till you tell me. You're going to stare at me? That's your plan? Yep. I stared at Zach for almost an hour, and he finally caved and invited me inside. Your stepdad and my dad were best friends, and they had a business together. My dad was the brains, and your stepdad had the connections. But once they were successful, your stepdad pushed my dad out of the business. Why didn't your dad fight it? He tried, but your stepdad knew so many big politicians and lawyers that my dad never stood a chance. After that, he changed. He'd come home shouting and angry all the time. Then one day, he left me and my mom. Zach showed me pictures of his father and several of his inventions, some of which were my stepdad's best-selling products. This isn't right. You think? My mom and I took your stepdad to court. I told the judge that I worked on some of those inventions with my dad, but the judge didn't believe me. Or your stepdad paid him not to. My blood boiled. My family's fortune was built on a lie. And they always told me that being smart wasn't special and would never get me anywhere. When the whole time, they'd taken advantage of someone else's intelligence. I went straight home and confronted my family. And they didn't deny a thing. Zack and his dad are losers. And they stood in the way of our success. But you stole their inventions. We did what was necessary. And why are you complaining? If it wasn't for your father's choices, you wouldn't live in this fancy house or have nice things. Stop being ungrateful. They just wouldn't acknowledge their selfishness, and they didn't care about the damage they'd done to Zack and his family. You're going to stop seeing that boy. He's a stupid, uh, nerd jerk. Yeah, a stupid nerd jerk loser. And he's a bad influence. You're a bad influence. Well, you have a choice to make. It's either that boy or our family. I chose Zack. We secretly saw each other for the rest of the semester, even though my parents grounded me and took away my phone. Zack left me love letters in my favorite library books and left me secret messages in my mailbox that only I could decode. Zack got a new job and returned to college. He was even able to make up for the tests he'd missed. Things were looking up until the day I graduated from high school. My family saw Zack congratulating me. We told you to stop seeing that boy. It's my decision. Zack is a good guy. He's honest, he's smart, he's kind, and he's 10 times better than the three of you put together. After that, my parents kicked me out of the house, refused to give me money for college, and stopped taking my calls. It's okay, Jess, I've got your back. Luckily, I'd gotten into college on scholarship, and Zack and I moved in together. Money was tight, but we managed to make it work. We started working together on perfecting some of Zack and his dad's old inventions. We even developed our own. Zack and I graduated from college, and then we started our own company. Our superior products made our company three times as successful as my stepdad's. A few years later, Zack and I got married surrounded by our friends. That night, we sat on the beach under the moonlight. Today was beautiful and almost perfect. I'm sorry your family wasn't here to see you get married. My family never saw me. They never knew me. I was invisible, but I'm not anymore. I looked into Zack's deep brown eyes, and then he kissed me.